Then uh, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. So this week I want to continue the discussion about how to vanish a coin. But for this week I want to look at fake puts as opposed to fake takes, which I talked about last week. Now I'm still going to use bobos for uh, the majority of this material, but I've got a few other vanishes that aren't in bobos. So let's go. Alright guys, thanks for coming back this week and uh, like I said, I want to continue the discussion about how to vanish a coin and we're going to look at fake puts this week. Now I mentioned before in the other video, which you can check out here, uh, to me fake takes are just naturally more convincing because that's how we, we handle coins in our everyday lives. Usually we have a pile of change in one hand and we're taking away a coin from the other hand. Uh, to do a fake put, it often looks like a very deliberate action and almost draws suspicion. But that's that's not to say that they aren't convincing. So I want to start in Bobo's with a, a number of uh, vanishes that are easy to do and really convincing looking. So starting from the easiest one we can do, uh, the first item in the coin vanish section, the standard vanish. So starting with the standard vanish, which is the first item in the coin vanish section, and then the item uh, right after that, the simple vanish, they're both very similar in mechanics. Uh, what we're doing is classic palming the coin as we fake put it into the other hand. So the standard vanish describes the coin being in position to be classic palmed. And as the right hand turns over, it's the right fingers that really push the coin into palm and then we fake the action of putting it into the other hand. The item right after that, the simple vanish, it does away with the clenching action and the right hand just turns over, palming the coin. Now, like I said, that's, that's the very easiest version of a fake put, but uh, we can add some little subtleties to it to make it cleaner and, and look more realistic. And like I did last week, I'm going to show you just a few tweaks you can add to these old techniques that really heighten the effect. So the first little subtlety uh, actually comes from Al Schneider on the standard vanish. It's the same exact mechanics, but what he does is put emphasis on one part. Now if we were to really put this coin into the other hand, we would allow that coin to fall to the fingertips as we then deposit it into the other hand. So what Al Schneider has done is mimic those real actions. So as opposed to the description in the text where we do this, it's just a simple matter of emphasizing that middle part. So we're here and then here, and then we do the move. Just like we would in real life, you allow that to fall to your fingertips and then you put it in your hand. So. Uh, going with Al Schneider's technique, which he calls the classic vanish. It's the same mechanics as this, but you're giving a moment of emphasis here and then doing the fake take, which I think just heightens the move a little more. It's a little more convincing. So with the standard vanish and the simple vanish, the coin is in position to be classic palmed. So we're not classic palming it right away, it's on display. And then it's here where the coin is pushed in. We mimic holding the coin as we place it into the left hand. So it's here, then there, and then there. Now it's important when you come out of the left hand, open your fingers up, move your thumb away, like you've actually released something into your left hand. Now, as far as the next item in the book, the simple vanish, I really don't like the look of that. Uh, whenever I've seen it done, it's obvious to me, at least, by the way the hand ends up in this position. It's hard for me, at least, to classic palm without a, a little bit of help from my fingers. 
And it looks that way when I see other people do it because their hand ends up in this cupped position, which is just a huge tell for me. So like I said, the mechanics are really similar, but I think the superior vanish is the standard vanish with the touches from Al Schneider, which he calls the classic vanish, coming here and then showing the vanished coin. A few subtleties you might want to consider. Uh, these are some things I mentioned in the other video. Just adding a little bit of uh, time to the vanish before you reveal the vanish. So these are more just natural gestures you would add in. So say the coin is in your non-dominant hand. We're gonna throw that to the, our dominant hand. Just pull up the sleeve, then do this move, do the fake put, and then pull this sleeve up. It, what you're doing is blending the secret action in between these natural actions of, of just rolling your sleeves up for a second. So it makes, it makes one suspicious move uh, blended in into three moves. So we're here and then here. And then what it's done is focus the audience attention after everything has happened. So as opposed to all the attention being focused now, there's a lot that can be caught by the audience. We're, they're seeing the coin, we're, we're showing supposedly that we have the coin, and then we're faking this part, and you know, there's a lot of points along that path that could lead to suspicion. So just a simple subtlety is to weave that into some other actions that we do naturally. Explore what other natural gestures you may use in your everyday life and practice those along with the way you are practicing these vanish techniques. Because I think this is more deceptive. Than just having the coin on display and then doing it like this. Your mileage may vary. Now the next vanish I want to show you is a few items after that, uh, just the thumb palm vanish. And it's the same basic concept. We're putting the coin directly into palm as we go to the other hand. So instead of classic palm, we're just throwing that coin into thumb palm as we go from here to there. So the same concept applies as, as far as the subtleties, which you might want to add a few natural gestures before and after the secret move, just to make the whole sequence more seamless and it feels more casual. And you're, you're changing the moment of focus to the point after which all the secret move has happened. So again, as an example, we're here, uh, and then there. And then now we can reveal the vanish. It's a little more convincing than just going right into it. So we're taking the coin on display, and then it's just a matter of the first finger folding back to where the thumb can take control. And then we're mimicking uh, dropping that coin in. We're here, here, here. Sometimes I, I won't fold back like this. I'll actually just slide it back almost to frickle palm and then snap it into thumb palm. So you can fold back or slide down the thumb to frickle palm and then snap down either way. Now we can take the same concept and, and move it to uh, finger palm. Now this isn't explicitly in Bobo's, but <clears throat> it's an obvious progression of the idea. If we can do this with classic palm or thumb palm, why not finger palm? So it's basically a, a shuttle pass, like we would have an, a coin in this hand and play it off as the same coin we're just dumping that 
into the other hand, but we're finger palming it. This is probably the easiest of those three uh, direct palm fake puts. But a subtlety with this one is just give the coin some movement before the move happens. So this has more of a loose feel maybe because of this dumping action where the others were more of a, a put. So along those lines, start tossing the coin before you fake toss it. So you're talking about the coin and then do the move and you're almost conditioning the audience to see this action, this falling of the coin before you finally let it fall to the other hand. In reality, you're, you're palming it. And we can, we can still apply the, the gesture concept to this one. So we're here and then there. And then it's gone. Now the finger palm technique is very easy. You're here and then it's just the third finger that's holding onto that coin. And a lot of the acting is in the left hand. So we come down like that, like we caught that coin out of the air. Now the next one I want to talk about is The Drop Vanish by Milton Court, uh, which is on page 25. And I've seen this performed in different ways with different positions, but the way I read it and understand it, it should look something like this, where the coin is fake dropped into the other hand. Now, like I mentioned with the, the finger palm vanish, what can help it out is the animation of the coin, the movement before that happens. Now the drop vanish has that, that movement to it. We're, we're seeing the coin fall apparently into the other hand. So from the illustrations and the description, the coin is held uh, behind the first finger with the thumb, almost like you were spinning it in the air and then getting, getting ready to spin it again. But from this position, you let it fall backwards and it's really just a slight toss and you want it to make a half revolution. So going from heads to tails before finally landing in finger palm. And you want that to happen right above your left hand with your left fingers covering the space uh, between your hands. So it's almost like, you know, you're just tossing that coin into your left hand, but it's ending up in finger palm of the right hand. This is hard to do slowly. It's more of a, a casual quick vanish, but that's the basic idea of it. So we're here, we're allowing that coin to flop back towards us and land into finger palm. This is hard to do slowly. And I'm reaching around in front of my camera here, but something like that. Now this next vanish is called the elusive coin pass or what we now know as the retention of vision vanish. And I covered this in another video, uh, which you can check out here. So I'll, I'll briefly go over the way I handle this classic coin vanish, which is probably more popular than any other vanish. So a coin is on display and then put into the left hand. It's, it's the most direct looking thing you'll see. And then that coin is gone. Now, this is probably the, the vanish that has the most variations and touches to it by the most people of any other vanish. But if you just look at the original version, uh, you have a good vanish on your hand. I'm not saying all the little touches and improvements that have come out from other people aren't good, but it's kind of like, like the double lift. How many double lifts do you need? You know, what, what's the cleanest? What's the best? 
I don't know. <laughs> I think most people's main goal with the move was number one, understanding how it should look from these old descriptions and drawings. And then number two, getting rid of finger movement. So you'll see a lot of people do this where they're, they're reaching out with these fingers to snatch the coin back. And this looks, it looks okay. Uh, you wouldn't want people focused right in on that move right when you do it. If you're gonna go for this route, it should be more in the periphery of people's attention. So an action that is on the way to doing something else. So to clean this up, this reaching and grabbing, it's just a matter of once the coin is in the left palm, you're going to tip forward and let go with the thumb. At that point, the coin is resting on the fingertips. All you need to do is swivel the right hand towards yourself, making sure the thumb can be seen away from the fingers and come away from the left hand. So it's more of a, a lay down type of motion rather than putting in your hand like this. But this to me is the, the closest version of what I think this, this vanish should look like, you know, in the, in the classic context of the elusive coin pass. Now there are tons and tons of versions of just the retention of vision vanish. So feel free to spend money on, on all those different versions. But if you explore the original and just spend time doing it, you have a good looking vanish that will, that will pass, you know, on any spectator. So the coin is on display here, just with the first finger and thumb. We come into the left palm. As soon as the left fingers close, and shield the view in front. The right hand's tipping forward and the thumb lets go. Now the coin is resting on the fingertips. The right hand can swivel towards your body and then out as the left hand finish closing. And make sure the thumb is seen, not here, but up and away from your fingers. So with this technique, there's no reaching across the coin to pull it in. It's just that. There is a little bit of pivot with the coin, but that happens as we're leaning forward. That just happens on its own. Now the last thing I want to show you is it's not in Bobo's, but it's kind of, I'm not sure where I learned it. It's sort of a, a blend of Charlie Miller's uh, Flopperino Vanish and the French Drop, kind of. But this is by far the easiest fake put you could do. So you'd have a coin on display and then just have it vanish. So this is simply just, like I said, a French Drop. We're doing that into the left hand. Now, what makes this more convincing is, is the motion and the acting of like the weight of the coin falling into the left hand. So with the right hand, it's a swing and then an abrupt stop as that coin falls flat. Then with the left hand, it's a drop and then an abrupt stop. Like we're catching, you can feel the weight of that coin. So the two actions happen together and it really feels like that coin dropped into the hand. It, it, it's very similar to what Albert Goshman would do. And he would, he would do it from a huge distance, you know, across here. <laughs> And you'd swear you'd see that coin in space flying over there. But you can do it right up close and get, you're guaranteed to get 
a retention of vision on that coin, no matter what kind of light source you're in. This is probably my favorite vanish uh, in terms of a uh, fake put that I do. You know, I prefer this over uh, the retention of vision vanish. It just feels more casual and less of a, a studied movement than doing that. You know, this is fits my style uh, better, but I do use uh, the retention of vision vanish with with plenty of routines. But if I if I were to choose what I think is the best and most convincing vanish, uh, this would be it right here. I'm a fan of economy of of methodology with high impact on on visuality. So if it's easy to do and it looks awesome, then that's the thing I'm most likely to do. You know, I'm not gonna worry about heavy sleight of hand all the time. It's it's fun to have just easy to do, good looking stuff. So this is the vanish, probably my go-to technique. So the coin is on display. We wanna get it up on edge right before we let it fall as we come to the left hand. Now just as you're practicing in the mirror, be conscious of the plane of your fingers here. So you don't want to be flat, you want to be showing the coin to yourself enough where the audience can't see that after you've dropped it. And you don't want to come full vertical so that it falls out of your hand somewhere between 45 and, you know, 70 degrees. And then you're just going to drop to your side at that point. And then press it into classic palm or finger palm, whatever you're comfortable with. But this is one of the easiest retention of visions that you can do. So that's it for this week, guys. Uh, just a few more vanishing techniques for you to try. And uh, I think for next week, I'm gonna look at different ways to steal the coin, which can help us accomplish the effect of a coin vanishing. So we did the, the fake takes, the fake puts. And so I'll look at steals next week and maybe throw in a, a few other ideas. I don't know if I'll be able to fill up a video with just steals, but. Thanks for joining me this week and come back next week.